Are you a fan of Cobalt Press or are you just a fan of the Midgard campaign setting? Or are you just a fan of some very cool one-shots of all kinds of different level that all have a very atypical feeling to them and all have something peculiar going on? Well, maybe you should look into the Midgard sagas from Cobalt Press. A few days ago, I woke up with absolutely no voice whatsoever. And making YouTube videos with no voice becomes really hard. So that's why I've been away for like a week or so, but no problem, I'm all back. I'm kinda cured now, so don't worry, I'm all good. Second thing is my channel, this channel which you're watching right now and clicking the subscribe button to right now, is still endorsed by the amazing Cobalt Press, the creators of the book that I am reviewing right now. And the reason for them to endorse me is they keep this channel absolutely ad free. So the reason you're watching my channel ad free is because of them. I chose to not run ads because Cobalt Press helps me out and in return I make sure to review their books which does not in any way, shape or form mean that I will review all their books as something positive. As a matter of fact, I've gotten a lot of modules from them and I am really picky of which ones I review. I have chosen to only review the things that I really, really love and there were some modules from them that I did not like as much as any of their other modules. But I am still a big, huge fan of Cobalt Press and I've even made a dedicated playlist of products from Cobalt Press. It's in the description below. Make sure to click, click it, make sure to check it out, make sure to click the subscribe button. Anyway, let's get to business. So what is the Midgard Sagas? Well, basically it is a collection of six uh, one-shot adventures that were um, designed to run on a convention. So like three to four hour uh, games that were redesigned to be played at home as a one shot. And I have to say they've done a very good job. What is Midgard Sagas? Well, Midgard Sagas uh, basically is a collection of six um, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition adventures going from level 3 to level 8 and they were originally all designed to play on conventions so they were like one shots of a few hours and they actually redesigned these adventures to be played at home as a one shot or even maybe like two or three sessions and there's always something very peculiar going on and that is often the case when people design um, adventures for like conventions because there's always has to be something special going on it's not like a typical dungeon crawl or a typical Dungeons and Dragons game. And there's six adventures in here that are very, very, very good. I have one problem with this book though, and I know it's probably just me, but it's called Midgard Sagas. And I know it is not the core meaning, the original meaning of the word saga, but still the word saga is often used... When, descri when you're describing like a kind of a epic tale when there's like family bonds involved and stuff like that like there's the Star Wars saga there's maybe even the Lord of the Rings saga or whatever um, there's always like a bigger family scope thing going on for when people use the word saga and for me it's these stories are not sagas, but that's pro probably personal because these stories are like small, very cool, very sometimes funny uh, stories that you can play with your players like in a one shot uh, or just put in your campaign very easily. For me, they are not sagas, but they are very, very well made. It is a Cobalt Press product after all. There are 122 pages and for me, maybe it is because all of their other products or some of their other products are like very thick tomes, but this one just felt a little thin. But then I looked at the pricing of it and it is priced at about $25. Ladies and gentlemen, six very well written adventures small adventures but very well written adventures with some amazing artwork and some other stuff inside a book by Cobalt Press is worth a heck of a lot more than 25 freaking dollars. I know there's a lot of people that create Dungeons and Dragons books and I know there's a lot of talent out there and I could not name all of the great talent that is uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons third party creation world right now. But always, almost 9 out of 10 books that I open and find very interesting, I always see Dan Dillon's name. So Dan, if you're watching this, stop stalking me. 
I cannot like a book or you're in it. Six adventures and I will talk about two adventures very briefly because first of all I think those two adventures are really really great and second of all I do not want to spoil the rest of the book for you guys. Also I will talk about uh, these adventures not in a way, way that I will spoil the entire adventure so if you're just a player that are looking to buy maybe this book for your dungeon master or whatever you can just keep watching. The first adventure is Murder on the Crossroads and it starts out as a very typical Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign or session because your players actually get a letter from somebody they worked with in the past and he's claiming that he's going to choose one follower of his guild to, to, to follow up in his uh, shoes as the captain or the leader of this guild or mercenary guild or whatever. Um, and he actually wants the players to be there for this occasion because there's like three people that uh, have the rights to follow in his uh, in his shoes and he just wants the players to be there to have like a party, have a drink and just clap when somebody gets announced to be the follower of this person. But then when they arrive at this very dark and mysterious mansion somewhere on a hill or on a rock, they are greeted with the fact that this person who sent uh, them the letter is actually murdered and the three suspects are still in the house. They are actually the people that would potentially follow in the footsteps of this person and they were there to see if they were the chosen one. And it's up to the players to kind of play detective and see who they think murdered this old friend of theirs. And these adventures are all written out in the way that Cobalt Press writes out their adventures. I have done a lot of uh, one-shot adventures, I've done a lot of uh, reviews of adventures of Cobalt Press and you can always watch them. They're just well written out, there's stat blocks, there's flavor, uh, flavor text, there's everything. Like this example, for example, this uh, entire mansion, everything about this mansion is completely, completely uh, mapped out for your players to explore, to see if they are good enough detectives to see who is the murderer. Even the three, the three suspects of this murder are all very well written out and there's artwork of them inside this book so you can really like show this to the players and by the way, the gnome did it. No, I'm just kidding. Or maybe. Am I kidding? Who knows? These kind of stories and the way it is written reminds me a lot about those stories and movies like for example Murder on the Orient Express where everything, well the players or like the viewers have to figure out what happened before like the players or the characters arrived. As a matter of fact, Cobalt Press has actually put a timeline right here where everything is laid out what happened before the players arrived on the scene to see if they can figure out and glue some pieces together and to see if they can figure out who actually did it. Like, it has a really mysterious feeling to it, I, I just love it. And it really changes up a very typical Dungeons and Dragons game for the better. Even the letters that are sent to the players are written in two different kind of handwriting. Uh, inside this book you can hand this out, maybe take a picture of it or just scan it with your scanner and print it out and hand it out to your players. They will find it awesome and they will really get into it. I promise. This one is set in the town of Zobek. If you are a Midgard fan you probably know where that is. If you are not a Midgard fan it is kind of in the middle or somewhere like in the middle of Midgard, it is the crossroads of Midgard. Anyway, there is a bridge that is supposed to go up and down for people to cross and for boats to be able to cross. And there is kind of a problem because the boiler room of this bridge is going absolutely berserk. The boiler itself is like set to explode anytime. On top of that, the clockwork guards that are supposed to protect the bridge are now attacking random people and everything that runs mechanically is absolutely acting completely berserk. And it is up to the players to defeat these clockwork guards, go into the engine room and try to defuse the situation before the entire town with the player characters in it is completely blown to schmitterings. And that's actually all I want to say about that adventure. Again, very well written out. There's pictures about clockwork guards. It's all mapped out. Play it. It's really, really funny. Cobalt Press really has a nick for making the players feel that there is like a clock ticking or something and that this this bomb can go off at any time. For example, once they reach the, uh, the boiler room of the bridge, there is this countdown round by round thing right here for the dungeon master. What happens each round? So the players really feel anxious and they really want to defuse the situation and they really have to think 
quickly on their feet right there right then and that's what Cobalt Press does very very good and then there's four more adventures which I will not talk about uh, right here in this video because I just do not want to spoil everything in this book. Uh, all, all I can say is that there is also a heist, a casino heist that suspiciously looks like a lot like a certain movie about a casino heist. Which is awesome because it's a casino heist and who has ever played a casino heist in a Dungeons and Dragons game? Uh, I haven't and I'm really eager to run this one, but uh, make sure to check it out for yourself. Oh, by the way, aliens. And of course, after these six amazing adventures, there's a completely fleshed out appendix called Monsters, where every monster you even remotely need in one of these adventures is completely written out. There are stat blocks and there's some great artwork of it. Everything you need to use and to run these six adventures is in here. I have a feeling I've seen this guy before. And last but not least, there's the magic item section and the void spells section and for people who are not uh, used to Cobalt Press or are not familiar with Cobalt Press or the Midgard campaign setting they have something as a void magic which is very cool the void dragon is actually like one of the main villains in the entire uh, Midgard campaign setting at least it is for me void magic is like magic that is comes from the voids I can really not explain it please let somebody else explain this for me angels so six very well written adventures, all written with some very good humor, all that all have something very peculiar, weirdish going on. Every monster you need is very well statted out and everything is completely mapped out, like almost completely mapped out. There's even some lore in here. Every NPC you need is very well written out again, like we're used to uh, from Cobalt Press. And if you need any book, maybe you're a player and you want to give your dungeon master a present for this holiday season, which is always a great idea, by the way, buy your dungeon master stuff. Dungeon Master would really appreciate if you buy them stuff. But if you want to buy your Dungeon Master with something that really tells, hey, you're very bad at the running games, use this. Make sure to check this one out. Because I am already uh, planning some one-shots with some friends at home to run some of these adventures in here. I think they're very, very cool and I just want to test out how a murder mystery or a casino heist plays out if I leave it to my friends. That was my review of the Midgard Sagas, a book that has not been released for such a long time, so it is quite new, so if you want to buy it for somebody, they probably don't have it already, and if they had it, they probably told you because it's such a great book, because it's from Cobalt Press. If you want to see any of my other videos from Cobalt Press, make sure to click one of these videos right here, and it will magically teleport you to the right video. If you want to stay up to date, because I'm throwing a lot of reviews out there in the coming weeks, if my voice can handle it in the future, Make sure to click the subscribe button below and I really hope your inspiration may guide you.